Hello everyone, welcome back to another video with me. Uh, today we're going to be discussing basically how to connect uh, or how to basically insert and select data from SQL Server using Python. Uh, so, you know, typically we've got this kind of dumb database here. Uh, I'm saying dumb just because, you know, it's just a normal database. Um, essentially all it has is this column, said report name, create date, and the report ID, which I have smartly not auto-incremented for some reason, but that's all good in the hood. So we're just gonna be basically trying to pull data from here and insert data into here. Now, the thing I, I generally like doing, especially when it comes to uh, interacting with databases is logging information and also creating uh, basically encapsulated insert and select statements that kind of do everything I want all at once. And that usually has led me to build a class whenever I do this, whenever I interact with database. So we're gonna have an init basically, right? Cause whenever you've got a class, you've basically got in Python, you've got an init. Uh, class, so self, you're gonna have your server name, you're gonna have your database, because basically the way this is gonna work is you can create a new database manager for every new database you wanna interact with, and then we're gonna have a logger file name, and we're just gonna make it blank. So this is just gonna set everything up for the rest of uh, everyone else to use or all the other classes to use, con uh, equal PyODBC. Again, we're gonna have to use import PyODBC for this, dot connect, PyODBC dot connect, Connect. Uh, now here comes a little bit of a long part, which this is where you're basically going to have a dynamic bit. So driver, honestly, if you were really smart here, you would maybe not limit it to SQL Server, but I am. Server, that's server name. Then we do database plus database name plus, and then just hold blank. Uh, so yeah, so now you've got your connection and every method or app this can use this connection. We're gonna set the database specifically for just being able to use the database name later on, database equals database. Uh, we're also gonna set uh, the logger file so we can use this later on. We're gonna set uh, the cursor so we can use this later on. All right, so this basically initi initializes your interaction with your database, right? So we've got the connection string. Again, you can connect this to multiple databases and work with them uh, for every new instance of this class that you call. The first thing we're gonna kind of just mess with and test around is a select data method. It's basically just gonna take the SQL string. That will be the select portion. Um, we're gonna take this, we're gonna add log first, and we're going to set this log to basically hold the information that we're running this select. Uh, method, we're running it on what database, and that's gonna kind of be that whole point. Uh, the, one more thing I forgot to put up here. We're gonna set up the logger as well, self.database, I'm just gonna logger. Yeah, logger. Uh, which is just a class that I've built that uh, configures how the logger is set up. You could. You don't arguably need that. So basically this logger takes the data, the name of the thing that you're running, in this case, this class. Yeah, so we're gonna log that uh, select statement that we ran. We get this table data, but really it's, this is just running this self dot cursor. Uh, we're gonna execute this statement, so sql.string. And then we're gonna fetch all that data. So I'm, really, I, I probably could have called this just either like the cursor, because it's more of like a pointer. Um, more than anything else. So basically this cursor, cursor has some data that it's pointing to, you just need to fetch it all. Now you've got the data and you're gonna return it because we don't wanna print it because we don't know what we're gonna do with it. Um, but this is just kind of your basic setup. So it logs information, um, gets that data, returns that data. So I got this test.py file. So this test with this test.py file, what we're gonna basically do is connect to this new database or connect to this database, create a new connection, create this test.log file, um, and then run the select statement, which is running on that table. So let's save this. Oh, all right, welcome back guys. I had a few issues. I forgot to do self.database here. Um, so fix that if you're following along with me. Uh, what else did I make a mistake? Oh, I forgot I had this little semicolon here. Um, so that caught me off guard. Um, oh, and then I wrote, this is like, one of these statements is like sql.com, should have been self, self.com. Yeah, now if we run this, I mean, you can kind of see I've already run this a few times, you get this data and it comes back kind of like that. 
So that, that kind of takes care of your select portion. And now we want to do insert. So with insert, we're just going to take a little extra precaution because when you're inserting, um, you know, things go wrong. And so we want to be prepared for that so string. Then also it's going to need data because you're going to be inserting some data. So just as a precaution, we're going to try this um, and we're going to take this try and, oh, let's do this on the other side. Let's run this statement here, but with, instead of it being the select statement, let's run the insert data uh, and run that on this database. And we're going to try to basically run the SQL string. I think I have to do this, even though I was hoping to not. We're going to then take this cursor.execute, execute. And we're going to run the SQL string and the data. So the data basically comes in as an array, um, but you can basically think about the array coming from like a CSV and it's just running it row by row. So when you read a CSV, it's really easy just to run this data row by row. And then we're going to do cursor.commit just in case. I always just do this regardless. So then we're going to return zero just to say nothing went wrong. So except we're going to have this accept statement for if errors happen. Oh, it's not just accept though. It's accept pyodbc.error as ex. So this is going to get you the error message. Um, and then instead of logging, we're going to log uh, error. And it's basically where it ran on on this database. Uh, this will basically store your error message. And we'll return one so that way, you know, you can, I'm, I'm not going to do it now, but you could essentially say, you know, if this returns one, do something, or maybe you have it here where it raises the error here, however you want it to kind of go, but it kind of gives you the option. So if you want to raise the error and break it, well, you can say, well, we returned one. So we're going to, you know, have something bad happen. Um, maybe, maybe you don't care if it returns an error. Maybe you do it, just having that flexibility. Uh, again, that depends on how we're, we're in this design. Maybe there's a variable here where it says, you know, raise error or not raise error. Or maybe, you know, if it doesn't insert, fail the whole system, but maybe sometimes you don't care if it fails the whole system and you want to keep going. All right, so now that we've created that insert statement, now we're going to actually test it out. Uh, again, you've kind of got this DBM that you're calling with this insert data. You've got the insert statement here. Uh, the data, again, in here, we're not doing a CSV. We're just going to manually do this array that we're going to insert. So what you can see, if we run this, is you'll end up getting an extra, so we've got this new column here. You'll see that we've got a new one. So if I keep running this, you'll keep getting a new column. So you'll eventually see this data keeps growing. You know, we've got like tons more data because it's both inserting and uh, selecting at the same time. Now let's go to the log. So remember, there's this test file that logs information. So it basically says first we inserted, then we selected the time, you know, who ran it. It says where we started with this database manager. And that just kind of gives you some general information. So now let's force an error. So let's put a bad character here. Let's force this error. So the one, the, one, the one precaution here is like, I've made it in such a way that this doesn't raise the error. So that's probably, that's definitely bad, but at least you can see it when you open up here, you'll see like, oh, now this one's insert thing happened. You see you have an error and you can read the error basically. And you'll see somewhere here, it probably says there's something wrong happened around D like we put in there. And so that's what this stores. Again, you might want to raise that error. You want to store, store it in the log for sure, because you know, as systems get bigger, you don't have time to look at each individual error. You want to just log it, but it, it gives, you can at least look at it. And you'll also see we've, we've stored a ton more data here. Um, you want to be able to at least look at it. Again, you should also raise it so that when it's running, you see it. Um, and sometimes you'll encapsulate the log um, even better. You, you'll encapsulate the log somewhere else in the system, but you know, right now we're encapsulating in the database manager itself. So that was kind of it. Uh, this is kind of just a quick way of connecting to SQL Server from your database manager or from, from Python. Um, again, we've kind of covered how to do this with MySQL as well, uh, but more hidden in, the J in my JSON video on how to basically load data from JSON. So we didn't load data from any sort of file here. I've, I've done that in the past. You can kind of see my bulk insert CSVs or, or other kind of similar ones. Um, this is kind of database manager that sits behind that system. So if you need that, that exists, I'll have the code below. Uh, please connect with me. Please talk about you know, what else you're hoping to see. 
This is kind of more of a part two of, of that ETL system, but uh, just showing you how to do the insert and select portion of it. Thanks so much for watching and uh, see you again soon.